Guitar and Excel, Pentatonic Scale, Fret 5, Intervals. Get ready and don't fret. Remember, the board's totally fretted already, so you need to be the calm one in the relationship. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but did so in prior presentations. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint, because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, scale chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently 10 tabs down below. We've got a bunch of these example tabs. We've got the OG orange tab. We have the practice tab. The OG orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior presentation. It now acting as the starting point going forward, mapping out the entire fret board giving us our entire musical alphabet and letters and numbers and combining them together having a key that can be adjusted with this green note which will adjust the key of the worksheets on the right hand side which provide us the notes in the key the chord constructions from the notes in the key and some interval information up top we then wanted to look at the key of c and think about the chord constructions within the key of c and we started of course with the one chord that being the c major chord we mapped it out first in open position mapping out the one three five discussed it in detail we went to the four chord because that's the other major chord we mapped it out in open position we went then to the five chord the g chord same thing back up to the minor chords the d chords did the same thing then we went to the e minor did the same thing then the sixth chord the a minor same thing and finally the diminished we didn't we didn't skip it we looked at the diminished as well and then now we're going to the middle of the fretboard journeying up to the middle now that we've got some idea of everything that's going on in open position not necessarily from a scale standpoint but rather from uh, the chord constructions which if you put them all together which will give you in essence the scale a major scale which would look something like this and now we're going to look at the scale starting in the middle of the fretboard and we're trying to expand out from a scale standpoint in the middle of the fretboard and connect that in to our other learnings in uh, the chord shapes so last time we discussed the the most popular pentatonic scale which usually often you don't have to play it by the way in fret five but that's probably the most popular place to start to learn the position one of the beautiful things about the position just as with the chords is is that they're movable so we can move them we'll talk about doing that later i want to start learning it in the middle of the guitar in fret five because that's going to that's going to link in beautifully to our uh, chords that we learned on the left and everything that we have learned then we can tie it together and when we tie it all together we're basically putting together the entire map of the fretboard in one key and then we we can of course think about how we can shift that whole fretboard thing because the beauty of the fretboard is it's symmetrical we have the capacity to do that this time i want to look about look more about the intervals now a lot of times when people learn these shapes they don't talk about the intervals as much because we we like to just kind of learn the shape from a from a natural fingering standpoint and then we might target particular notes uh within it but the intervals are really useful because they actually allow us to see these shapes not as just kind of nebulous shapes but as the scale that are are in the shape form the reason it's difficult to see the scale in this kind of shape is because when we visualize a scale we usually visualize it say on like a piano type of layout or if you're looking at the fretboard we visualize the scale on one string and we can apply out i'm going to go to the og tab we can apply out this pattern of whole step whole step half step whole step whole step whole step half step if you imagine a piano that's the that's the pattern in the key of c where the black notes are going to be uh are, are going to be the half step so if you play just the white notes then you're going to be in the key of c because this pattern is is what is mapped out on a, a piano that way obviously if you change to any other key it gets confusing on the piano <laughs> because now the shapes will be different even though this pattern will be the same on the guitar the beauty of the guitar is that is that the shapes will be the same as you as you move up the neck you're not gonna have to change you know the form shapes 
And so that's, that symmetry is good, but it also means that sometimes we lose the capacity to visualize the scale pattern just in a linear format, which is easy to do on say a piano, or it's pretty easy to do on one string of the guitar, right? If we map out a scale on one string of the guitar, then it's similar to the piano. And we could just start on any note and do the whole steps and the half steps on each uh, of the strings. So what's, so the, then the question is gonna be, well, well, if I'm looking at this pattern, what does it mean to go say from the eight here back to, or from this E string on the C to this string for uh, the D when I'm thinking about it in terms of the distance uh, so that I can kind of see the pattern in this box format rather than simply in a linear type of format across one string. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna get into a little bit. Remember that to get into this, we have to understand some of these, uh, some of these different numbering conventions and the, and the intervals, which aren't confusing in and of themselves. They're only confusing because we tend to mix them all together and we have a lot of terminology that I wanna kind of dive into a, a, a little bit at this point uh, in a little bit more detail. So, uh, for example, we have to name the actual notes themselves. We could do that with letters. We could do that with numbers. We have to name uh, a numbering convention for the notes that are in the scale that we're in, seven notes in the scale. We might use a Roman numeral numbering system in order to give us a level of meaning beyond just the notes in the scale, also providing whether it's gonna be a major chord construction or a minor or a minor chord construction. We then have the actual name of the notes in uh, positioned with relation to the actual chord we're playing, the one, three, five being names that are tying to the, the first note in the chord that we're playing. And we can go all the way up to 13 here. And then we can also think about the actual intervals, the actual distance between notes. That's what these are up top. Now to get an idea for this, let's go back to the OG tab over here and remember our musical alphabet. So our musical alphabet, there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet. So, but we have those sharps and flats that make it confusing. So if I tried to memorize it, I can't sing the alphabet, right? I'd have to, if I'm going up, I usually use sharps, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, back to A. If I'm going back, we would generally use the flats. A flat, G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A. And the reason we use the sharps and flats that way, just to keep that in mind, is that we don't want to have two Bs next to each other. So, so we want to have a different letter, and we can do that by alternating, in essence, the sharps and flats. Also remember that when you're sharpening something or flatting something as a verb, that means sharpening, you're moving it up a step, flatting, you're moving it down a step. Now, it's easy for us to use the musical alphabet if we just, let, if we just number the notes. I highly, I'm, so this is what I'm pushing to do, to number the notes. That's gonna help us to think of the intervals. You don't have to do it. You can watch this without doing that, but I still think it, it would be useful to memorize as long as you memorize all, all this other stuff. So an A is a one, uh, the A sharp or B flat is a two, the B is a three, the C is a four, the C sharp or D flat is a five, the D is a six, the D sharp or E flat is a seven, the E is an eight, the F is a nine, uh, the E sharp or G flat is a 10, the G is an 11, the G sharp or A flat being 12, only 12 notes. Why is that helpful? Because I can count up, I can count back very easily, and I can look at the intervals very easily. Now, I wanna emphasize this interval thing because we have all these different naming conventions for, for naming the intervals. So once I go back on over here, we could see that all these different naming conventions are basically naming how what a distance is so i want to try to break that down and it's easier to do that with just the numbers right before we do that though we also then come up with the creation of the notes in the scale there's only seven out of the 12 how do we do that we use the formula of whole step whole step half step whole step whole step whole step half step why do we use that formula that's beyond the scope of the lecture we're going to take that as a priori that's just the formula so if we apply it then four plus two is six, six is a D. Six plus two is eight, eight is an E. Eight plus one is nine, nine is an F. Nine plus two is 11, 11 is a G. 11 plus two is 12, 
and then back to one, because there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet, we go around it, it's like a circle, you can imagine it like a circle, it just keeps repeating, the snake is eating its own tail or whatever, if, you, if that analogy works, then we're back to a one. One plus two is three, a three is a B, three plus one is four, and four is a C, and now we're repeated, these are the seven notes in the alphabet that's making our notes over here. So now we have seven out of 12 notes uh, over here in our uh, musical alphabet. Now, the next thing that might be useful to see is to see the intervals between, between the strings. So if we go from an E to an A to a D to a G to a B to an E. Now, if you look this up, most people are gonna say that that distance, they're gonna say that that distance is a fourth or a major fourth which is kind of confusing to most people because again, like when I hear that for a long time, I was going like, well, what does that mean to be a fourth? Because if I look at this, I'm saying if this is an E to an A to a D to a G to a B to an E, it's like, okay, what's, if I go, if I start at an E, this is, I'm imagining the top string, a low E, and I'm trying to get up to an A, what does a fourth mean? Is there a fraction? Is it, is it like, you know, eight out of 12 or, or something like that, that they're talking about. Or maybe they're trying to say that it's like, it's like we only are using like the key of C. So there's no sharps and flats. And then I'm talking like we're going from an E and then we go up to an E F G. So F G uh, A, but then that only works if you actually start on the E. So now you're starting on the E, E, F, G, A, and then I get to the A, that kind of works, but that's not really the distance of three notes, you're counting the note that you started on, right? And so I think I think that can, what's actually happening, and if I try to say, well, what's the actual distance? Well, if I go up to an A and I use my math, and A is a one, and I say, well, I went from eight, eight up to nine, 10, 11, 12, back around the horn to one, it's five. There's a distance of five actual notes. So, so what are you talking about that it's a fourth, right? This, these are the questions that come up with these intervals. So for example, if I take eight, if I see E as an eight uh, and, and, I, and, I'm, or, and I add five to it, I get 13, right? It took five steps up. There's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet. So I can subtract 12. That gets me to the one, which is an A. Or you can start it at a one and subtract minus the eight. That gets you to seven. There's 12 notes in the musical alphabet. So I'm going to say plus 12 it gets you to five. So the distance between these in terms of absolute note notes is going to be five. So, so I think what's happening with the fourth convention is they're using this convention over here where you're saying you're numbering based on as though the first, uh, the first item or the first note is the first note, note in the scale or in your chord, like you would l label a, a C major chord, for example. So we, we know that the one is just going to be the one and then which is really no interval because we're looking at the distance from it as a C and then the the three, how far away is the three? Well, if it's a major chord construction, the three is going to be four notes away. Now that four notes away, remember, like when I say it's a major third, it means that it's a whole step or a half step or four notes away, right? And then if I say it's five, if I say it's a fifth, that means that it's five notes away. So then the question is, well, what does it mean to be a fourth? Because we skip the fourth, right? We don't use the fourth because we go to the one, we go to the three, we go to the five, because when we construct a chord, we use every other note. And we went from the one to the three to the five, we skipped the four. So what, why are you using that term? Because I don't get to that four until I go around the horn again, right? I'm on the five and then I go to the seven and then and then I have to go around again, which gets me to the nine, and then I go around again to get to the eleven. So the four seems to me is that it's equivalent to the eleventh if you're using that kind of measuring term, right? And the eleventh, if you're talking about a major eleventh in position one, here's a nine, an F minus four, that's five notes away. Nine minus four. So do you see how kind of confusing that is when you're, when you're telling most people that if that's the convention we're using, it's, it's a fourth away, most people are not thinking, oh, okay, well, that must mean that you're talking about the measuring convention of as though, as though I'm building a chord from the first note away 
and then you're using a fourth, which I never actually use because we don't usually build fourths, which is equivalent to the 11th, which most people don't talk about in the first place, which would be the fourth, as though I built it off of the four, okay? You see what I mean on, on these measuring things? So, so I'm gonna, so, and so I'm gonna try to use an analogy uh, just, and I know I'm exaggerating this, but just, I mean, this would be kind of like saying, like, I have 10 fingers, right? I have 10 fingers and I'm trying to, I'm, and there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet. You can think about it the same way that I'm trying to get from one finger to the other finger. I'm trying to go from my pinky up to, you know, my pointer finger. How far is that? Well, how would you would count? It's one, two, three fingers away. You start here, one, two, three fingers away. That's how far it is. You wouldn't really start saying, well, you know, it's like a whole step and a half step, which I can also call like a major, you know, a minor third distance away, right? Like, why do you need to do that? It's only, f you only have 10 fingers. Like you could use the same convention of it's one finger away. And this is what I kind of want to stress. I'm just, all I'm trying to point out here is that any of these measuring conventions that you hear, you can break down similar to just basically distances in standard units of one note away. Another analogy, just to, just to try to, a ruler, right? A ruler. And I, it has 12 notes on it. It's basically, or 12 inches on it. It's basically the same thing as the, as the musical alphabet. Whenever we're using these measuring conventions, we're basically using a unit of distance. We're naming the original point and then seeing how many points away is it in terms of notes, right? So if we, if we say that one inch, for example, there's 12 inches in a ruler. If we say that one inch is is like one note away half step then that that's all you really need because there's only 12 of them right i mean so so to this would be like what we have here with the with the music system would be kind of like similar to some like tenured academic egghead insisting that we can't just use the inches here we have to come up with other units of measure so they decided to come in and take the 12 inches and come up with a new name for every combination of inches within the 12 inches. And I know I'm being a little unfair here, but just, I think I'm just trying to hammer the point here home that we're really just talking about 12 inches or 12 steps, right? Like you can imagine them coming in and saying, well, we need to stop just using inches. We need to have what I call a whole step. And you're like, well, what is a whole step? And he's like, well, that in essence, it's like two inches. And it's like, well, why, why do we need two inches? And it's like, well, we have to have, we can't just use a half step. We have to have a whole step. And it's like, Really, do we really need a whole step? Because I mean, it's not like we have a problem of of measuring tools not being sufficient. Like like we're trying to measure a football field compared to measure like the distance between galaxies or something. In which case, we need like yardsticks versus light years or something. Like there's only twelve, there's only twelve inches. But then you're like, okay, whatever. He's really insistent. He likes his new term, his new thing. So it's like, okay, we'll call it. Oh, I don't get it, but you, whatever, we'll call it. A whole step and then he's like now we need to we need to have a minor third and you're like well what is it what is a minor third well a minor third is a combination of a whole step and a half step and you're like well what is that that's just three inches that's just he's like yeah it's three inches but it's a combo of the whole step and a half step and you're like well that's ridiculous but you've already accepted now not just to use inches so you're like okay whatever i guess it can't do much more damage than the other confusion of having a whole step in the first but then he's like now you have to have the complement if you if you accept that there's a a half step and a whole step you have to have the major third too which is like two whole steps and you're like but that's only four that's four inches do you need do you need to call that two whole, or like a, a major why don't you just call it four and they're like you have to and it's like okay i give up and then and then of course you have a fifth well what does a fifth mean a fifth means seven inches Okay, and it's like, okay, and what what does it mean to have to have to have like a diminished fifth? Well, that means like you had seven inches minus one. That so that's six inches. Why don't you just call it six inches? And they're like, well, that doesn't sound as cool as a diminished fifth. Now does it, right? And if you had an augmented, that's like fifth. Then it's like seven inches plus. Well, it's eight inches. You see what I mean? So I'm not, and I know I'm being overly unfair because there are there's meaning to saying something is a fifth or seventh because it kind of names 
of the position and its related cord and stuff. And I don't, and I, so I get that. I know I'm being unfair, but I'm just kind of drilling the point home here that anytime you see like one of these interval terms that we're, we're talking about, what well, the question you want to ask is, what is the, what is the starting point that you're starting at and give it to me in inches or in our case, half steps in notes, how many notes away is it from that starting point? And I, and I think that'll clarify a lot of, it'll, it'll allow you to see these intervals uh, much more easily and it'll allow you to see what, what is happening with these, uh, with these naming conventions. I mean, it, honestly, it's, it's kind of like if you, were dri- if you were driving down the basketball court and you threw up a shot towards, towards the hoop and then the basketball magically changed it into a, like an American football and someone caught it in the end zone and you scored a touchdown, getting six points instead of two points that you would have gotten the basketball game. Why? Because it's a game changer, okay? It's a game changer. I mean, honestly, just one more analogy because I, I just to, like this, this measuring system would be like going to the doctor, right? You go to the doctor and he wants to, he wants to see how long your foot is, right? He wants to see how long your foot, and he's like, he pulls out his magical medical majoring stick and you're like, well, that looks like a foot stick doctor. Uh, And he's like, no, it's not a ruler. It's not a ruler. This is a magical medical measuring stick. And then he plant and you're like, okay, I don't presume to know the arts of doctory. So, you know, I'll take your word for it. And he puts the stick next to your foot and he tells you that your foot happens to be uh, like, like a two major thirds, a minor third plus a half step long. And you're like, wow, that's the magic of medicine. That's amazing. And then a week later, you get the nerve to ask the doctor, could you give it to me? I know I'm stupid doctor, but could you give it to me just in inches? And he's like, yeah, it's about 12 inches. And you're like, well, why don't you tell me my foot isn't 12? That's just an example. But you're like, why didn't you tell me that the first I've been on Google I've been on Google trying to figure out how long my foot is based on it being, being, you know, two major thirds, a minor third, a half step long. Right. So, so you see what I mean? It's like, if you, if you start mixing these measures up, you're, it's like, it's like, you're not comparing apples to apples anymore. You're comparing like apples to boogers. Right. And, and although there's a lot of similarities, you can't put them all in the same basket as if they're the same because there's differences. Like some people don't even like the taste of apples, you know? So in any case, that's gonna be the point. My point is that the distance between these two is, is actually in, in, in total terms gonna be five units away, except for the distance between these two. And you can, you, and you can measure that with, uh, with just your math if you number the notes. So you've got the E to the A, and if I go from an A to a D, we're going to say, okay, I can go from a six is minus the one that's five notes away. So that makes sense. Cause you're going to go an, an A is a one and then two, three, four, five, six, right? Okay. That makes sense. And then I'm going to a D to it, to a G. So we've got 11 minus six and that's going to be five, right? So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That makes sense. Here's the weird one though. Then you're going like from a three minus the 11 gets you to a negative eight. Whenever I hit a negative, I'm going to say plus 12 and I get to four. It's only four notes away. And that's because you have that, that difference between these two strings, which results in all the strangeness differences. That's the only one you have a difference on though, because if I go to three or eight, eight minus three, then I get back to the five distance between these two. So they all are five notes away except for that last one. So what does that mean? Well, if I go up to my fretboard here, uh, if I go like on my guitar and I'm saying, well, that's an E and I go five strings up one, two, three, four, five, then I'm at an A and that A is the same, the same A here as we have down here. See how that's actually useful. So now I'm saying, okay, that makes sense. Why does that make sense? Because this string, the second string is five notes up. Meaning if I count it up this way, one, two, three, four, five, then I have the same position as this string on the nut. Or if I see the string on the bottom, I can count up and go one, two, three, four, five, and then up one string to get to the same note. So that's, see how that is actually useful. And you could do that, of course, on 
this string here. We could say, okay, this is a this is an A to get to the D, it's five notes away. So if I started on the nut, one, two, three, four, five. So now that's five strings up. That's the same as the next note down, which is a D. Or or if I was on the D, I can go one, two, three, four, five notes up and then up one, and there's another D. So you can see the, the pattern is there. If if you saw it as if you if you got confused with that four thing, then you're not gonna see the pattern because you're not realizing that it's actually five the thing is 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 five notes away. Now if you go you you can also just to take that idea a little bit further, you can also say, well, if these notes in the musical alphabet are in a circle, just like we did the circle of the seven notes in the scale, but if we did that for all the notes in the musical alphabet, all of these notes uh, in the musical alphabet, and we and we just made a, a, a uh, circle out of them, not these notes, where are my notes? These notes over here. Then you can, you can imagine the circle just infinitely going around uh, in a in a loop, right? Which means that that if you're saying if you're saying that it's five notes away one way, then it's going to be twelve because there's twelve notes minus five or seven notes away the other way. So for example, if I if I started in the middle of my fretboard and I looked at the E right there, if I go five notes up from there, this is just starting over. So this is the fretboard two times over, right? or like a fretboard that was twice as long. If I go five notes up, one, two, three, four, five, I get to the A, which is the equivalent of the string below. And if I went seven notes back, then I would get to an A, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I get to the seven notes back, right? Because you're seeing it as like a circle. And I hope you see how these like intervals actually are useful, right? That helps you to kind of see, you know, what is happening here. So, I, so then I can, I can have it go backwards. And if I'm going to the bottom string and I'm going up to the top string, you know, if it was, if it, then, then it's going to be a seven note dis distance. Or so like if I'm going from the E down, I'm going down like in pitch to a B, then I can take this, the second one, this three right here, three minus eight gives me a negative five plus 12 and we get to seven, right? And then here's the funny interval between these two. So I can take the 11 minus three and you get to an eight because that's the fun. And if I go to it, and this is back to the normal one. If I go from 11 to a D, I'm gonna go from six minus 11, negative five plus 12 gets you to a seven distance here. If I take the one minus six plus 12, I get to a seven distance here. And then if I go from an eight minus one, I get to a seven distance here. So if you're going from this string up, you have five, basically five note distance intervals. And if you're going from this string in pitch, which is the highest string and going down in pitch, then you have the seven intervals. Why? Because seven plus five is 12. Okay. So that's going to be the general idea. How does that help us when I'm doing uh, the fingering on this side. So now we can start to look at our pentatonic scale and we can say that if we start on uh, the A here, you could walk it through as though you're as though you're in the key of A minor, which is what we've been looking at before. Or you can try to say, I'm gonna look at it first in the key of C, right? So if I take my C, let's do that first and I'm, and I'm right here. And let's say we start our shape there, then we're gonna go from the C uh, to a D. So now we're gonna go C to a D. Now, usually a C to a D would be uh, a four to a six, right? That's a whole step or two notes. So usually you would think if I was on the same string, I would be going up here, uh, two strings up. But I wanna stay in this fingering position. So I'm instead gonna go down here to this string. So now I'm going from a, a four to a six. And so you can imagine, so you can see like, how does that work? Well, if that was, if I went two strings up, up this way, I would end up at a D, but I don't want to go that way. Instead, I want to come back down here. 
what, what's the interval between these two strings? It's one, two, three, four, five, and up one. Here's a D, here's a D. So what's happening here is I'm in this four position shape, and when I wanna go up one more whole step, two notes up from a four to a six, two notes up, I could go up here or I can drop down, down one fret and, f and four frets back. And you see, you see what that means? So, that, so that's the equivalent of going up another whole step. So now that's we're dropping down to the string because of that distance between the strings. And then we're going from a six to an eight. So a six to an eight is uh, two notes up. So that's, that's why boom, boom, two notes up. And then we're going from an eight to I'm skipping the F. Now I'm skipping this note. Notice that's a half step. That's what we're skipping when we do the, the pentatonic versus the major. In essence, there are no half steps in the pentatonic. Those are the ones that are removed kind of, and that's why you only have these, these, this space and then, or the two spaces, the long and the short. So we'll see that when we get to the, uh, when we get to the major. And so then we go back down to uh, the G down here. So that interval is going to be eight, nine, 10, 11, right? So we got three notes down to the G and I'll analyze that more when we get to the major. But if I go to the G, G to the A, it goes up to 12, then around the horn to one. So it's two notes away to there. And then I'm going from an A uh, to, a, to a C. So we're going from an A to a C. Uh, notice that when we go from, uh, we're going from an A to a C, so I got lost there for a second. I'm skipping, notice what we're skipping is the B, right? We're skipping that B, which would be right here. And one way you can think about that in terms of this shape, notice notice what you do not, what you would have in this shape if you, if you pick that B up would be three strings on the pentatonic shape. So that's another thing that we're not doing on the pentatonic shape. We're not having two notes right next to each other, a half step away and we're not, or like just one note away, right? And we're not having three strings on one fret. We only have two, uh, two notes on each string generally. So then we're gonna go down to the C. So there's back to the C. And you can see that we have repeated now because we started on a C. So now we've gone through the, the scale. We've gone all the way through the scale. If you play this out, it'll, it'll sound kind of like you're getting back home so when you go here and then you can run through the scale again in the upper and the upper register so now we're going from c uh, to a d so once again that's going to be a whole step uh, a whole step up uh, or two notes up and then we're going from a d to an e so now we're going back to this e down here now this is that funny interval because because we're going between these two strings. Remember these two strings were only four notes away from each other. So if I was up at this D here and, I, uh, and I'm going to an E, it's two notes away. So I could go D, two notes away would be up here outside the position. And that would be, and if I, if I did that, that would be then my E, but instead I'm going from my D down to here. Now what's those, so those two notes are both E's. So then the question is, well, how many frets up is it? This is one, two, three, four frets up instead of five and up one, right? That's where that difference in the relationship is. Instead of five frets up, it's four frets up. So the difference between these two strings, when I'm trying to go from here to the string down to go to a whole step, notice I'm not starting from like my, my pinky position but instead I'm starting from uh, my ring finger position and then dropping down to the next string on my pointer finger because of the difference in the intervals basically between those two strings. And then we've got the long distances down here going from the E, we're skipping the F uh, again because we don't want that half step. So the half step's been removed. And then we've got the long, the long distance going to the G and then we go from the G to the A. So when I go from a G to an A, 
that's going to be a whole step or two notes. So if I was here, I can go two notes up to here. But instead, this is the normal, just the normal position. If I want to go a whole step up, I can go from my pinky position in these four frets to the next string down to the floor with my pointer position, right? And that's and that and that's why that that interval uh, works well. That's why the distances between the strings are basically uh, five notes there. So so in other words, if I took this string up here. Uh, as a G and I went up to there, there's an A and this is an A. So what's the distance between those two? Well, for this A is one, two, three, four, five notes this way and up one. Same, same distance between those two. So if I'm out here, instead of going up to here to get to the next whole step, I'm dropping down one string down and four strings back, which is perfect hand position to go from my pinky position back to my pointer position down here. And then again, we've got that long stretch up to the C. So I know that was a tedious kind of explanation, but a lot of it, a lot of people find it difficult to see the scale on the guitar. We learn the shape, but we don't even really think about the scale because again, we're just learning the shape, which is fun to do. And when we learn the scale, it's easier to see on a piano, which is laid out on like one string, it would be similar to be laying out on one string. So so so, but if we learn this interval. We can start to say, well, what does it mean when I'm going from this pinky position down here? Well, usually that means if I'm going pinky to pointer, I'm going, it would be equivalent for me going one whole step up this way. So instead of going one whole step up this way, I'm going from pinky to pointer, except when you're down between these two strings, in which case it would be going from ring finger to pointer on the next string. That would be a whole step because of the difference between that interval.